What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and this week we have another installment in our Model Aviators and their model series. Love this series. It's about our RC community, the awesome people in it, and some of the awesome airplanes they fly. And this week we have a very rare and unique bird. My buddy Dustin Jenton is back once again with one of his rare pieces in his collection, a Mystere 3000. I think I'm saying that right. It is an interesting airplane. It is a tractor canard, which you do not see. And there's issues with that. Dustin, as always, with, with these with this series, we have an interview with the owner and pilot, so we'll have an interview with Dustin. He is an aeronautical engineer by trade, and he'll talk about the design of this airplane and some of the issues with it and some of the things you have to watch out for flying it. And then, of course, he's going to fly it. He's going to hand it to me, let me fly it. It was a very interesting airplane. This one flew well to me, but I avoided the things that Dustin warned about. I just tried to stay smooth and deliberate, did some aerobatics with it. It flew fine, but I never did any of the things that Dustin said would bite me, so I, I enjoyed it. It is a very unique looking airplane, and it's one of those airplanes, there's not a lot of material on YouTube about this, and there's not a lot of people that seem to have a whole lot of success with it. This is a hard airplane to get right and I would imagine that Dustin's flies about as good as you can make one fly so interesting airplane check this out please like comment subscribe if you need anything from Horizon Hobby go through our link in the description our affiliate link that helps our channel out and we appreciate it anytime you do that enjoy this and we'll see you next week with something cool with wings take care all right everybody I'm here once again with my good buddy Dustin Jenton he is uh great pilot and he has some very peculiar airplanes and this is certainly one of them so Dustin what is this thing? This is a Mystere 3000 and uh, I don't know I think it's an Italian airplane maybe uh, it was given to me by an older gentleman at my flying field when I was in high school as a, basically as a kit um, I put it together and uh, flew a few times so Wow so how old is it? I'm gonna guess I got this at about 2004-2005 and uh, I flew it a bit back then and uh, just this last year, I've gotten it flying again. So it's kind of like a maybe somewhere between a kit and an ARF. Uh, but yeah, you had to put it together, cover it, put the engines on, put the servos in, all that kind of thing. Uh, wasn't a terrible build. It was just a little bit more work than your standard ARF. Okay, well, that's cool. So, what components did you use throughout? I believe there's an OS 46 AX in that, and then a full set of Futaba standard servos. Okay, like 2002, yeah, 2003, I think so. something like that. Probably. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, what <laughs> what inspired you to build this, other than just the fact that it was given to you, or is this something that you were interested in before? That was pretty much it. It landed in my lap, and uh, you know, again, this old gentleman, uh, Mr. Holt, I believe, um, saw me out there and decided that he was kind of getting out of the hobby and gave me this kit, and I thought it was interesting, so I built it. I mean, it is definitely unique. Sweet. How long did it take you to build it? Do not remember. I'm gonna guess maybe a month or so, off and on. Okay. It's That's been cool. a while. Not sure. Right. So, how did the maiden go? Uh, not great. Uh, I put it on the top of a pine tree during the maiden. Um, the my my guess is that it was too nose heavy. I basically got in the air and I couldn't couldn't really climb. I climbed enough to get into the initial turn and then never could like climb enough to make the downwind turn and just end up in a pine tree. Uh, so I rebuilt it after that because the wing broke in half and it was fixable. But there's a big plug in the wing here. You can see some of the coverings a little discontinuous and that's why. Um, what I did do is I took the elevator servo and I put it on the outside of the airplane so I had direct length to the elevator. And also, as you can see, put a bunch of tail weight in it. Um, and actually, I never flew it again after it crashed until I until like this year. So it went for 16 or 17 years after that crash, rebuilt it, and I never remade it. And uh, I guess, what was it, six months ago, we made it again? Yeah. And it, it flew all right uh, with a few quirks that we'll talk about. But Yeah, and that's a good segue. So the final thing I had is, is there yeah, I think it's interesting from an like aerodynamic point of view on this one. If you look around, you don't see very many puller configurations that are canards. And I feel like there's a very good reason for that based on how this thing flies. You know, canards, the whole idea of a canard is that the canard stalls first and it prevents the wing from ever stalling. Uh, so it's basically an unstallable airplane in theory, but that's why you have a pusher prop on them. If you have a puller prop, it's constantly blowing air over the canard, which means if you are on power, the canard will never stall because of the air blowing over it pretty much all the time. 
but the wing will. It'll allow you to get to an angle of attack that the wing can't support, but the canard can. And then that just puts the airplane into like a like a feedback loop that gets worse and worse and worse until you really do something to get out of it. And you'll see that on takeoffs here if you're not careful, because the nose will pop up and because it has enough lift and the wing's not ready to fly and it'll take off and just get into this death stall kind of thing. And wow. if you're not real careful and get the nose back down and get your speed up, it will it will go who knows where. And it's almost done that twice on me until I learned <laughs> that you uh, got to be very careful and not let the nose come up until it's got enough speed. Now when the engine's on idle, it works great. You can you can pull it to full elevator and it just comes in real nicely. But as soon as you give it power, you got to be real careful. Otherwise, it'll just stall like crazy. Man, that's great. And if I remember correctly, that amount of, I guess that's technically up elevator on a yep. canard, correct? Mm -hmm. That amount of up elevator is actually how much is trimmed into this for it to fly straight and level. Probably. I do think it's still a bit nose heavy, uh, but I, there was a certain point where I got tired of adding weight to the tail and it flies now, so <laughs> right. it flies acceptable. Uh, so basically what you're saying is it's a crap design. Yeah, it's, it's not a great idea to put a, a, pull, a <laughs> propeller in front of a canard in my opinion. Uh, and again, if you Google it, you'll not find very many airplanes that have ever done that. I feel like that's the reason why. So. Right. Well, and also, you were mentioning you searched this thing on YouTube. There are not very many videos on it. This is a really rare airplane, but the ones out there, nobody's having any success, are yeah, they? Yeah, I've seen maybe one where somebody was flying it, and it did all right. And I've seen another one where somebody was flying it, and it did basically exactly what it almost did to me, and it went, went crazy on takeoff and crashed. Uh, it did that to me once, and got in a not very safe position I managed to pull it out but uh, I learned learned after that to avoid that situation uh, but yeah there are not very many on the internet and maybe that's why or maybe it's just because it's a 30 or 40 year old airplane I don't actually know when this was produced uh, if you google Mystere 3000 you'll find some information about it but yeah there's not many of them around wow that's something else well we've got Heidi in our corner so hopefully we can uh provide the interweb with some really good footage of one flying well. So you want to get to that? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it.